Recording has started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Vegan Spirituality Online Gathering. This um, show is part of In Defense of Animals Sustainable Activism Campaign, where we provide emotional and spiritual tools for animal activists. So Vegan Spirituality is an online gathering, but we also have in-person gatherings all across the country in many different cities. So you can find most of them by going to veganspirituality.com. And there you'll find in different cities, people gather together to explore veganism as a spiritual practice. And that's what we're also doing on our online gathering. In the in-person ones, it's usually through a Facebook group or a meetup group, and people gather together for a vegan potluck and have an opportunity to perhaps have a speaker come, or they may do an activity uh, amongst themselves. And here, when we're online, we do have the benefit of being able to bring in different uh, leaders in our, the vegan spirituality community. And we have one for you today. So I'd like to take a moment, just share. My name is Lisa Levinson. I direct the Sustainable Activism Campaign. And my co-host is Judy <clears throat> Carmen. She's the author of Peace to All Beings. Hi, Judy. Hi, I'm here. Hi, everybody. So um, were you finished? Yes. <laughs> OK, all right. Um, okay, I'm the invisible co-host, everybody. <laughs> My name is Judy Carmen, and um, I'm actually in Colorado right now with my daughter. And uh, but very happy to be with you all on these. Uh, I love these calls; they're so wonderful. And we're so happy tonight to have as our guest Deanne Thompson. He is the outreach manager for Faith Outreach for the Humane Society of the United States. Faith Outreach engages people of faith on animal protection issues on the premise that religious values call upon us to act in kind and merciful ways toward all of God's creation. She pursues partnerships and engages volunteers to bring the faith outreach message and programs into faith-based communities and also schools, churches, and organizations, and this is all over the country. She is with us this evening to help us learn strategies for faith-based animal advocacy, which I know we're all very interested in. And if you wish to contact Deanne after the call, she has generously offered her email at dthompson at humanesociety.org. And that's D P H O M S E N. And uh, you can also visit the website, which is humanesociety.org forward slash faith, F A I T H, for uh, ideas. So, um, Deanne, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it so much. We know you're busy, and for you to take the time, we, we just are so grateful. So um, maybe we could start out um, asking you to tell us about your journey to becoming vegan and about how your veganism impacts your own spiritual life. Great. That sounds good. Thank you, Judy. And thank you, Lisa. And thank you, everyone, for joining. It's an honor to be here. Um, okay, so my journey to veganism. Um, I was, it was ninth grade, so it was, a, it was a long time ago, and I remember a friend um, handed me this PETA card that said, fur, there's no excuse. And so um, from an early age, I learned about the fur industry and the atrocities facing animals, and I think that led me maybe to the PETA website and um, became vegetarian, and then I just really got involved in grassroots activism, um, did that for good 20 years and um, and then went vegan probably about eight years ago. Um, I finally was becoming more aware of the cruelties associated with the dairy industry. Um, I kind of just had to research it one day myself and just say enough is enough. You know, I think I Googled, um, you know, dairy industry cruelty and within 30 seconds I was vegan. So, um, so that's kind of, I guess, my journey into this um, world. And, um, 
and and then the okay so the question about um how that kind of coincides with my spirituality i think that veganism and our spirituality really go hand in hand um i think they're one in the same and for me i would say that being vegan is is sort of an outward expression of my inward beliefs and so it's a really important way for me to be able to align my values with my actions and that's something that we really try and equip our volunteers to do as well um, and really just that that's a, a prime message of ours is, is how can we align those two things and what does that look like so for me you know I, I, personally i am a christian so um i'll probably be alluding to to those references but for me anyway i would say that i want to reflect who I follow, my creator, and I want to um, have that, you know, good shepherd image that Jesus, you know, displays to us, and he is our, our example. So for me, it's it's very simple, you know, thou shalt not kill, and um, kind of taking on that life of a servant, and to, that, that we are here to serve and not be served, and to lay down our lives for another, um, to be merciful and kind and compassionate, all of those central messages that are in the Bible. And so for me, it's just, it's very natural for these things to go hand in hand. And um, it, it's just, it flows, you know, naturally. So I guess that's, um, I guess that's probably why I, I am vegan and, and why they, those go hand in hand for me. Well, thanks, Deanne. That's a, a beautiful way to put that. And yes, for us, they do go hand in hand. And and yet it's hard, um, you know, for so many people being in churches and synagogues and various places and and the other members of that faith place not getting that, not mm-hmm. seeing that mm-hmm. hand in handness. But but I love the way you describe that. Um, so how long has Faith Outreach been active? And what are some of the accomplishments that it's done? Great, yeah. So um, so Faith Outreach at the Humane Society of the United States, HSUS, um, we've been around for about 10 years. So it was established in 2007. Um, but I should say actually that that HSUS as a whole um, has been very supportive of the work that faith plays in animal protection from the beginning. Um, so we were established about 60 years ago, more than 60 years, 1954. And one of our, um, the chairman of the board, Robert Chenoweth, he was one of the first, and he, um, when he was addressing the members, he actually said um, that we, that our, you know, all of us were created by God to live together with the animals, and that our creed is that, you know, we, that from the strong to the weak, we display, you know, love and compassion. Um, And then another interesting fact is that two of our CEOs, two of our former CEOs were members of clergy and their leadership spanned the course of 35 years. So the majority of our, of our time. So um, they believe that this was our ministry, which it really is. And so, um, so yeah, so in that time, um, in the 10 years since Faith Outreach was established, some of the accomplishments, there's a lot. Um, well, we've seen a lot of progress. It's really exciting to see the momentum building. Um, and of course, this is not a new message. This is not a new concept um, for religion that we that we care about animals, that we're kind and merciful, but rather, you know, we lift up this tradition that's already in existence in all major religions, um, treating animals with kindness and mercy. Um, but we do see a lot of momentum because the more we talk about it, um, the more we engage. So we we've engaged in those 10 years, thousands of faith leaders. We get them involved politically, endorsing measures, um, speaking out on behalf of of issues that come up. Um, We've held seminars and conferences. We've spoken at really influential events like Q and Jubilee, where there's just thousands of of people of faith in attendance. Um, We partnered with the Every Living Thing campaign, which was a couple years ago. And um, that's where uh, basically a thousand, I think it was more than a thousand faith leaders signed on to the evangelical statement of responsible care for animals which was really exciting. So essentially they were um, agreeing to kind of a call to a compassionate lifestyle. And um, so that was really exciting. And then we moved that into a book called Every Living Thing. So you can find that statement in there with all of the faith leaders who've signed on, um, as well as 
denominational statements on animals. So again, kind of what all the, the main denominations, um, the evangelical ones have to say about animals. So that's really great resource as well. And so we had a big campaign for that, which was fun. We brought that message to different churches. Um, we've launched faith advisory councils. So those are really wonderful. They, they're faith leaders who kind of represent us in their communities. They guide us and help us. Um, so we have multi-faith. So for example, we have a Dharmic advisory council which is wonderful um and so we definitely have we've established that we've established a really thriving volunteer program um so we have people on the ground in their faith communities getting this message out there of proper stewardship of animals and what that looks like and and some tangible ways of doing that um so those are just some of the things we've done but um i'm sure there's more that i'm i'm not thinking of but um yeah we've done we've been able to to make some good headway um in those 10 years so the faith advisory councils are um are most of those christian denomination people or uh do you span a lot of different denominations or are different uh, religions i mean yeah, yeah. So we do have like our faith advisory council. So um, we, uh, we have like Christian, um, Jewish faiths, things like that. And then the Dharmic, of course, would be more like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism representations um, oh, in those okay. communities. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. Amazing. That's a, a lot. Yes. So, mm -hmm. um, so back to the volunteers, um, yeah. how many have, do you have and what are some of the things that they're doing? Like on, on a local, I assume they're working on a local level or, um, yeah, how are they working to bring the vegan message to places of faith and, um, yeah, so what what's going on with the volunteers? Yeah, great question. Um, so, yeah, we're excited to say that we have we've got probably about 650 volunteers and allies right now. So that's kind of our team on um, boots on the ground and it's nationwide. So we have people all across the country, um, actually a couple of people in Africa. Um, so we're, we're happy anyone, wherever you are, we, we'd love to have you. Um, and so basically these people are out there um, in their faith communities. So that, so they're going to their synagogues, mosques, temples, campuses, churches, universities, you name it, um, with this message um, that we want to really get churches more involved in faith communities. And so they are um, utilizing sort of the tools that we have available and our free resources. Um, so basically, these are things like, um, oh gosh, there's so many things that they're doing. It's it's really incredible. So we have our volunteers, you know, just meeting with their faith leaders, starting the conversations. Um, a lot of churches we're seeing they're starting these green teams or creation care teams. So that's a really great foot in the door to partner with them and start bringing the conversation of animals into the equation. Um, we work with Interfaith Power and Lights, so we can tap into all their networks and. Um, go at it from like they're talking about the environmental angle and how this so closely relates and they, they go hand in hand. Um, we have volunteers showing screenings of our documentary Eating Mercifully, which is a really lovely um, documentary uh, talking about kind of the factory farming concerns and what that looks like for us as people of faith. Is that something we want to support? Um, so they'll show screenings of that and maybe they'll do a little talk before or after. Maybe they'll bring in some vegan food or do a plant-based potluck or a cooking demonstration Q&A session it's really really powerful and effective um, to show screenings of that we have a fill the bowl kit so people can do um, pet food and collection you know pet food and supply drives and they can donate supplies to the local animal shelter or rescue group or we encourage them to partner with food pantries so that people who are going through a difficult time don't have to part ways with their beloved pets during that time um, so they can stock things with, you know, pet food. Um, we have Sunday school curriculum for children, people leading those classes. We have animated films for kids that um, give them that the messaging of factory farms um, for that's very age appropriate. Um, we have small group study materials people can use um, that talk about faith leaders and their involvement, like C.S. Lewis and William Wilberforce, um, Hannah Moore. 
and um, lots of things. We have volunteers writing letters to editors on different issues, which is really, really effective. Um, they're the second most read page of the paper after the front page, so letters to editors are very effective and um, people who table at events for us. We have people hosting pet blessings and really taking advantage of this season that we kind of are leaving right now, but the season of St. Francis and how we can keep that momentum going throughout the year, um, how essentially we can bless animals, not just on this day, but throughout the year and what that looks like. So for some people, they're starting up full on animal ministries at their churches. Um, so there's just so many fun different things that people are doing, getting involved. But um, yeah, those are some of them. We're also working with um, with campuses and schools and hospitals, their cafeterias to sort of transition them and um, be a part of our Meatless Monday program. So we really encourage steps in the right direction. So even if that means they try vegan on Mondays, that's incredible. We really encourage every step in the right direction. So um, we're working, we train kitchen staff and help them implement more plant Based products as well. Wow, that's a lot going on. Yes. <laughs> so, and and you can find these resources at uh, humanesociety.org uh, faith slash faith. Yeah, backslash faith. Is that where so you we can do find them? Yep, we do have those online. And then, of course, you guys can reach out to me directly. Um, these are free resources. We just want to be a resource. We want to equip people. Um, and so anyone who wants these things, we are happy to send them to you um, and, and equip you with that. Wow, that's great. That sounds like a lot of resources there to use. Um, and it sounds like a lot of your volunteers are, are working within their own place of faith, their own church or synagogue or something like that, trying to to um, introduce these ideas from within. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you can do it wherever, but we find it's a little easier if you already have some relationships there, you know, people, maybe you're mm -hmm. already, uh, you know, involved at church, you're on leadership or you're a volunteer already. And so it's just a little easier to kind of introduce these these ideas. Um, but of course, pe some people will go elsewhere or they'll help others at different churches. Um, or we always encourage maybe even campuses. There's a lot of really great, um, you know, especially if it's a faith-based campus um, to connect with them. Or a lot of campuses have religious groups or social justice groups or environmental groups or animal groups, and you can partner with them. And um, that's always really fun, especially if you do like a, a pet food drive over the holidays on campus or, um, you know, eating mercifully documentary screenings are really great for campuses, especially if you bring in food. Um, they love free food. So we always say, hey, see if Chipotle might donate some, you know, sofrita burritos or something like that. And you're sure to draw a good crowd. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, really nice. people will en engage their um, Boy Scout troops, Girl Scout troops. You know, there's a lot of fun um, bar mitzvah projects. Um, there's a lot of great ways to, to engage. Okay, that sounds great. And so I I did have a question in mind. Uh, you've kind of covered it in a way, but I'm going to ask anyway. If I, the question was, what strategies has faith outreach found that work well to create an openness to the vegan and animal liberation message? But you've kind of answered that. There's lots of different ways. But yeah. have you found any particular strategies to be extremely good or successful? That's a great question. Yes. Um, I would say I would say the the most important thing when we do this work is building relationships. I think that we have to understand these things take time. You know, we want to see things happen yesterday, but we have found that building relationships, investing, taking the time to do that, get to know somebody, build rapport, build trust, build a friendship is so key to the work that we do and to the success that we have. So that is so important. Um, getting to know people, sharing a meal together, um, bringing in some vegan food, you know, that's a great way to someone's heart. Uh, they're going to, it's going to really open up some great conversation too, but, um, but definitely you know, and meeting people where they're at. A lot of times I'm always finding myself saying, we're planting seeds, we're planting seeds, you know, so um, knowing that it takes time and to really just meet someone where they're at. So we've all probably gotten a lot of these comments such as, 
God gave us animals to eat. Humans are above animals. Um, you know, we have dominion, you name it. We've heard a lot of these things. So mm-hmm. I find that for me to try and if I personally don't believe that animals are here for us to eat, it's, pro- it's I'm probably not going to go anywhere if I try and talk to someone out of out of that they believe that. So I'm not necessarily going to say try and try and argue with them on that. You know, we're both going to probably be left frustrated. Um, you can definitely go down those theological rabbit trails and and we can each bring up different scripture to back up whatever we want to back up. But we often find that that just leads to frustration. So I'll try and meet them where they're at. Right. So, for example, um, they might say, OK, well, God gave us animals to eat. Then I would say, okay, well, do you think that God would approve of the way that we're treating animals today in factory farms? Do you think that that honors him and that um, we're being good stewards in the way we're treating them, you know, and do you think that God gave them, you know, these feelings of joy and pain and, and these wings to fly and legs to move and babies to raise to just languish in a pen, unable to move? And I've truly never had anyone disagree with that statement. So right there, we can meet at the same level. They're no, they're not defensive. And now the, now we're equipping them to be able to like help and to understand kind of where we're coming from, that it's not any extreme message. It's just saying, hey, like we can do better. We can do better. Um, and what does that look like? And then you can kind of start that conversation. So I think that that's really important. And then I will say too, um, one uh, scripture I like to bring up a lot is Psalm 24, 1, which is, it says that the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. And I think this message is really important because um, it's saying that animals are not ours, they're God's. Ultimately, they're his. And he has entrusted us in the care of his animals. So just like anytime we borrow something from a friend, I mean, would you borrow someone's really nice car just to trash it? You know, no, we take, we almost take better care. That's what stewardship is. It's caring, caring of something for someone else. And so really helping someone understand the difference there, um, it kind of, it adds this accountability. Um, so I, so I guess that would be my long answer (laughs) to your question, Judy. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's, I love that. Um, building relationships, I think, is so important. And we could maybe put that as a, the top strategy of all strategies. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Um, so, and strat- we do talk about strategy a lot on our calls. And we're all trying to figure out ways to approach people and um, meet them where they're at and um, and bring them around so that they can align their values with their actions. But we also talk a lot on our calls about how to prevent burnout mm. among ourselves because um, it's this is, as you said, this is a spiritual work in so many ways. And um, so it, it can affect us spiritually and emotionally. And we need to stay strong but sometimes the, the the rejection from people, and at least of our ideas, if not of us, and yeah. um, and just the the hard work and all the bad news that we see can cause burnout. Mm. So I'm just wondering what advice you would give us to help us stay spiritually strong and uh, continue in our animal liberation work. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, that's a great thing to bring up, Judy. Um, And I know you guys with IDA have a really lovely number people can call into if they're struggling or they need someone to talk to. Um, And at HSUS, we we talk a lot about compassion fatigue and we offer workshops for people. So I'm happy to, um, you know, send out a link if if anyone needs that resource as well. but that's so important. It's so important to, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to to love God and love others as ourselves. So we need to. Lo- how are we loving ourselves? That is so important. Um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take take a quick break and I'm gonna show you. We have a visitor. We have a guest appearance from my kitty Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would just introduce him real quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so so um i think it is so important that we we know how to practice self love and 
if we're not happy and whole ourselves, we're not going to be able to help anyone else. We have to help ourselves first. And I have been there. I'm sure most everyone on this call has been there at some point or another where we are just so sad. We're so, we feel defeated. We feel depressed. We feel hopeless. Um, or we're just angry. We're really angry. And and I've been in all those places and we, we go there, but we can't stay there. So you're right. The trick is like, okay, how do we get out of this, this place? And so for me, a lot of times I think um, it's community. It's finding like-minded people to, to surround ourselves with who will encourage us and build us up and, and support us in this work. Um, because like you said, so many people do not support this and um, they're moving in that direction, but not everyone's there yet. So, so, um, community. And then for me, I had to set boundaries. Um, you know, I would, it could be as simple as, you know, maybe there's someone on, on Facebook who you have to unfollow because some of their posts are just too, um, they're just too much for you perhaps, you know? Um, so just knowing like what, what our boundaries are, you know, for me, um, I think all of us on this call probably we're, we're there. We know the issues we're committed, we're invested. So maybe we shouldn't be watching all of the latest undercover investigation videos or that newest documentary that's fairly graphic because we don't need that convincing. Um, you know, there's one that I've seen so many times that I can watch it without falling apart. And so that's the one I'll use when I'm showing it to a new friend to, show them the issues, but I know I'm not going to like. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's see. Oh, we might have lost Deanne there for a second. <laughs> yeah, sounds Let's like see. It. We'll <clears throat> give her a try again. So Deanne was just sharing a bit about her own personal um, self-care strategies. Hi. Oh, hold on one sec. I'll get your voice up there again. Let's see. And there we go. Okay. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Yeah. Hi, guys. Sorry. I don't are. know. I think I lost connection. That happens sometimes. We are okay. on live. We're dealing with the, the random forces of the universe as the internet can be up and yeah. down. So we're so glad you're back. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let me try and remember. the self. You were talking about your favorite self-care tools and how... Yeah. Um, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think just boundaries has helped me anyway. Um, and um, I would say... I think a big part of it too is we have to remember all of the um, advances we are making and the progress we are making because we can get so discouraged and focus on the really sad stories and just how overwhelming it can all be. But we have to remember um, we are making progress. And, you know, we've had, just, we've just yesterday, Gucci announced they're, they're going for free. Um, that's huge. And, you know, that's following the steps of Armani and Hugo Boss. And, and we're, we, ha we had about 250 companies now commit to going cage free. Um, that is a step in the right direction. This is great. It's obviously not the end goal, but this is incredible, incredible advancements. The marketplace is changing. People are demanding that, that animals are treated better. Um, people are starting to become more aware of plant-based foods. There's more and more vegan options where we go. Go in the grocery store and see all of the incredible nut milk options. Whereas, you know, 20 years ago when I went vegetarian, people didn't even know what that, you know, it was just, it was such a different climate at that time. So um, we're seeing Ringling drop elephant acts and, and we're going to see the day when animal acts are no longer a part of entertainment. We're, we're seeing so many exciting things happening. We have to focus on those victories. I really believe that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I agree about the not watching certain videos for us because we already know. Right. And, uh, and focusing on the progress and having community, which is a, a, a good part of what what our conference call is all about and the vegan spirituality gatherings. So, Anne, um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we open up for questions? Because I'm sure some people have some questions. Yeah, sure. Um, I do. So this is... Um, 
so, just uh, something a little different, but very exciting. Um, I am also now helping uh, as a campaign manager for a, an exciting historic um, ballot initiative that we are launching um, with a bunch of coalition partners. And it's essentially going to um, require that all um, pork, egg, and veal that's sold in California, in the entire state of California, comes from animals who aren't raised in cages in extreme confinement. So essentially, this is going to end the era of extreme animal confinement. No more gestation crates, no more battery cages, no more veal crates. Um, it's it's incredible. It's historic. Um, we're really excited. We have to collect half a million signatures in 180 days to get it on the November 2018 ballot. Um, so we are looking for a lot of help with signature gathering. We have actually like six spots still available for paid signature gatherers. So if anyone wants to get involved in the movement in a paid position this is an exciting chance to do that um we're partnering with you know the humane league and mercy for animals and it's a really fun time for all these different organizations to come together um to to make history for animals um so we're really excited um if anyone's interested in that i can actually just check out preventcruelty.ca.com that is the website with information you can sign up. We're gonna be doing a bunch of kickoff parties starting in November. So that's where we'll give you all the information. We'll train you on signature gathering, all of that. Um, but that's gonna be a huge step in, in the progress of getting to the place we wanna be. And I know that there's different camps. Some people don't agree with, you know, animal welfare reform and, and that's, that's okay. Like we're, we all, we all have the same end goal, but we have different ways of getting there. And we have found this to be a very effective way of doing that. Um, you know, we saw that even with, with Ringling, one of our incredible volunteers, um, because she was able to get a ban on bull hooks. It essentially led to the progression of of Ringling dropping their elephant axe because they couldn't use these bull hooks anymore. So little things like that chipping away at these systems is really what gets us to that that place. And and we've seen this throughout history. You know, these social justice movements they they, they take a long time, but but it happens. Um, and we're all going we're all in this together. And so anyway, so we're we're excited about that. So um, if you want to be a part of it, let me know. Okay. Great. So now, Lisa, do you want to open up uh, for for questions? Sure, so we can do be that. Thinking about your questions. Yeah. So what we'll do is um, anyone can ask a question. You can do so by typing it in the chat box uh, if you're on the webinar with us, um, or in the comment section if you're with us on Facebook Live. And you can also, if you are. Uh, on the phone with us, you can press star four, and that will um, give you an opportunity to ask okay. Deanne a question directly. You can also ask her a question directly if you're online with us by uh, unmuting yourself. So you have the power to do that. You can click the little um, microphone icon and unmute yourself, and then you can ask Deanne a question. And I will also check to see if anyone has a question for us via the um, the Facebook Live. So, and before we get started, I wanted to take a moment and really thank you for sharing all of these great uh, advocacy tools. I think that's a question that we get frequently. And also wanted to mention to everyone who's listening that um, Deanne and her Faith Outreach Project is part of um, in defense of animals, we have an interfaith vegan coalition, and she's one of our, our members of that group, which also hosts other um, uh, organizational leaders and people who are advocating for faith-based activism. So we're excited about that, too. Um, so let's see if we have any, any questions. Anybody has a question for us on... Some people are sharing, great work, they just became vegan, they're very excited about that. Um, okay. People even in other countries are saying, uh, you know, thank you for your great work and that you do for the animals. So those are things happening on the, the Facebook Live feed right now. And It takes then, a tribe, it takes all of us, so it's every single one of us. <laughs> it does, it does. So here's a couple of questions. Um, and. One is um, by one of our our uh, folks in our gathering and named Marcia, and she's asking, what do you think about declaring ve veganism as a religion? 
Is it an ethical system based on principles like ahimsa, which people live their lives by? Um, for some of us, it is virtually our creed. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm i not sure how to go about, you know, if you wanted to declare a religion, I know it's happened, um, and that's certainly something you could look into. Um, I, I do know that there's um, there's churches and different faith communities that, that are vegan. So, um, you know, and a lot of like Unitarian Universalist churches are really great. They are very supportive. Um, Seventh-day Adventist communities, um, obviously, you know, the, the Dharmic faith. So a lot of times it's already interwoven. Um, but it, yeah, as far as starting that up, I guess um, that could be something you could definitely look into. So the idea of veganism being a religion, that is a question. Actually, there was a gentleman named Stanley Sapone who wrote a whole article on that. He had a website called Vegan Values, and I thought that was it's, – it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, and actually, Deanne's right about that. There are people starting uh, vegan churches. There's a, a gentleman who's part of our online community um, – we call him Pastor Rob, and he's recently purchased a church, and it's going to be a vegan church. So this is part of what's happening on the, mm -hmm. the faith-based uh, <clears throat> front with veganism as um, moving into the forefront as a, a religion or also the way we phrase it in our vegan spirituality community is that it's, it's a practice, that veganism mm -hmm. is a practice that we explore to um, – really understand the deeper meaning of, of compassion for all living beings. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. I think there was another question I'm going to um, uh, add, and this is from another one of our online guests, Beth, who is sharing. She's asking, what is um, HSUS doing to promote vegan living? And then – She's, so she's asking about that question, it's specific, like when you do some of the, the outreach and advocacy programs that you mentioned. <clears throat> yeah, um, great question. So so HSUS as a whole is not necessarily identified as a vegan organization. Um, we work really hard on being very mainstream so that we can reach everybody with the message. Um, and we work on the most egregious forms of animal cruelty. So. We have a full farm animal protection department, and they um, focus primarily on, you know, factory farm issues. Um, so we do have people, though, um, within our organization, members, donors, you name it, who some eat, some eat, you know, animal products, and and there we have vegans and vegetarians, and we have meat eaters too. So um, the the biggest thing is we we work on the most egregious cruelties. So that would, like I said, be factory farms, and then also things like puppy mills and horse throwing and horse slaughter and animal fighting and wildlife trafficking. So we do cover all issues where animals are affected. Um, and so, you know, we're not, you know, we do, we do work on all those things and we want to first take care of, you know, the, the main issues. So that's why um, we commend people when they, you know, decide to go cage free or get rid of gestation crates because, Though it's, you know, believe me, like personally, I would love to see, um, I would love to see, you know, total animal liberation and animals living free and, um, but there is a process and, um, and so we do have to um, go about that a certain way and, um, and really focus on, on getting, you know, getting to that point. So I don't know if that, if that answers the question, but. Yeah, yeah, it does it explains kind of the um, the philosophy, and also this is a whole uh, organization with so many, many different programs going on, and you're leading a faith-based advocacy program trying to bring, um, you know, awareness of, of being kindness to animals to mm -hmm. faith-based and people of places of worship, mm -hmm. and so that's that's what we're featuring here. Um, I also wanted to mention there. Uh, there's another question coming from someone on our Facebook live feed, and she's saying that she sees so many instances, instances of animal cruelty um, online, actually, and it's really hard to see. And she's wondering how you do your work and deal with um, seeing more cruelty because you're so involved. She's asking that question. Oh, good question. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know, again, it's kind of um, going back to sort of that boundaries thing. So for you, if you're not having to, try not to. Um, for me, I'm fortunate where I don't have to see as much. Like some people who are in full-time positions where they're, you know, literally either filming these things or they're having to edit the footage. I couldn't personally do that. Some people are able to do that. Thank God. Thank God for them. Um, I'm very, very sensitive. So I have to be really careful. So I knew coming into this position kind of like what that would look like. And fortunately, I don't have to be exposed to a, a ton of it. Um, I do, for example, check our California um, state Facebook page, the emails that come through. And believe me, I've seen awful things. And I think we can all agree that when, when we think we've seen the worst, we see something worse. And it's truly mind boggling that these things are happening. Um, so I think we can, we just have to try and limit it as best we can. Um, I have to go at it, you know, with an approach of, okay, don't get, don't get totally caught up in this. Don't get too emotional. I have to figure this out. Okay. This is, this is happening. What's the step we need to take to resolve this issue. We, we just have to be strategic about it and not get too, too emotionally wrapped up in it, or we're not going to be able to do anything. So I have to just, I see it, I get the facts and then I have to try and figure out how to resolve it. So um, it, it's, it's difficult. There's no way around that. And then maybe processing that with somebody else after maybe watching something funny, watch, I will tell you one thing, the dodo, if you're not following the dodo, you have to follow it. It is, it is the best thing to follow out there. It's all happy animal stories. So, um, it will restore your faith in humanity when, when a lot of times we, we are really questioning it. Yeah, thank you for sharing those tips. And that, that question was uh, from a woman named Lillian. And she said that that was very helpful and that she's very sensitive and that sometimes it can be mind boggling. Um, but I really like the suggestions that you mentioned, trying to change the channel on our mental thoughts mm -hmm. from watching something that's traumatic to, okay, I'm going to shift, turn the channel literally to see something that's, you know, amusing, something that is um, bringing me a sense of peace or well-being. All of those are really great tools. And also the dodo, of course, and <laughs> we all love the dodo. <laughs> It's, it's a real feel good place to go. And I guess you could call it our animal, animal safe place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a comment also about, about veganism that um, being a practice and that many workplaces don't protect people who have different values and that's not covered by law currently. Um, and sometimes vegans can experience bullying in the workplace or mm. abusive behavior, um, just that this is tricky and people may feel a sense of um, just not being safe in their workplace, not having these sorts of protections in place. And that's one of the benefits of being declared a religion actually that um, would be beneficial for veganism mm. if that was the case. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there was a question um, attached to that, but what I will say is I have that experience as well. I mean, clearly I'm so fortunate now to work in an all vegan office and with all vegan colleagues um, in our, in our LA office here. But before that I did work in, um, you know, corporate America as a recruiter for eight years and, you know, it was really difficult. And I thought that all the time, like, gosh, you know, this is bullying. This is bullying. I'm constantly getting commented on with by what I'm eating. And, and it's not us. We usually aren't the ones to bring it up. It's somebody else who wants to comment on what we're eating. And um, so what I found just just to touch on that is that it was interesting over the course of that time, I found that some of the people who were um, the worst about it and made me feel the worst and always commented and were just really nasty about it near the end of that time. They were actually the ones asking me, Oh, well, what about like this recipe? Or they started asking me about how they can eat that way. And it, and it blew my mind, but it made me realize that a lot of times the people who are most vocal are probably the ones who are struggling with it the most internally. And that's maybe why they're expressing that. And it's sort of like this defense mechanism because they're struggling internally with that that decision that they're making because deep down inside they're probably not comfortable with that decision um so that's their way of handling it which is a, is a terribly inappropriate way but i would say as, as as hard as it is and as much as we want to 
you know, fight for our rights and tell them they're in the wrong. Unfortunately, we're not protected at this point. And the best thing we can do for animals is to try and stay positive, try and joke back, try and keep a lighthearted spirit about us. And believe me, this is not easy. Um, I hate doing it. Sometimes I hate it. I'm like, why should I have to laugh about that? I'm, I'm upset. I'm so upset about this. But I do feel like the more we can be approachable and give off this good energy, people are going to notice that. And it does take time, but they come around. I, I, it's surprising how many people come around. Well, that is very encouraging. Um, I have a, there's an activist that we've interviewed a couple times on our sustainable activism webinar, Ray Sakura, who runs Plant Peace Daily, and she believes that there is no lost soul. <laughs> she thinks that everyone, um, we, we want to have that feeling of hope that everyone can turn around. And I appreciate your um insight that many of the people who are most offensive, they may be the ones who are uh, having some internal questions. They may be the ones who might be eventually open to mm -hmm. this idea of looking in, at their diet, reevaluating things. Um, and I've even noticed that in my own family. So I think you've, you've found, uh, stumbled upon something really important that often those who are most reactive may be the ones who um, might be in fact open to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's something for all of us to know and to keep that level of compassion in our hearts for everyone that we interact with. <clears throat> yeah. Um, also wanted to take a moment and just to mention for anyone who doesn't know that uh, in defense of animals, we have a support line for animal activists. And I'll tell you the number so you can have it with you or write it down. It's 800 705 zero four two five and you can call that any any day during the week and you'll reach a counselor who is vegan also an animal activist and will be able to talk to you about some of these situations that happen with our co-workers and with our families and to get a sense of support and also a sense of community because that's really important as part of uh, maintaining our lifestyle choices and feeling good about who we are is having a community and that's part of why we do these gatherings absolutely yeah. So just want to tune in and see if anyone else has any other questions, you know, seeing if anybody would like to ask a question. If you're with us on the webinar, then you're welcome to press star four if you have a question just to join in on the phone or if you'd like to um, unmute uh, your microphone or even turn on your webcam, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, this is a good time to ask any questions that are on your mind. And if you're with us on the Facebook Live event, you can simply type the questions into the chat box here and then we'll we'll go ahead and, and comment on them. Um, so one of the people has mentioned, um, you were talking about the workplace and how it can be stressful working in a non-vegan environment. And um, one of the people on our, our Facebook Live event is saying that working as a vegan in the healthcare field is actually really challenging. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's something that we wouldn't expect um, because uh, often we hope that people in the healthcare field would understand some of the healthful benefits of going vegan, um, but may not always be true. Yeah, and we have, you know, I, I touched on it earlier, but we do have a really neat um, program in place where we can help um, talk to like your dining service director and and see if we can help um, possibly implement uh, and kind of revamp the menu. Um, we have like a lean and green program and some really cool stuff in hospitals you know, should be on board, of course, um, not all are, but uh, that is something we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a lot of momentum with that and people are getting really excited about it. So that's certainly another resource too, to try and convert um, these dining halls to a healthier, you know, menu and then uh, something that's more acceptable too, so that you feel more comfortable there and you know that um, your beliefs are supported or even doing like documentary nights or like, um, showing movies you know like um forks over knives is really great talking about the health benefits and we you know we know that a lot of people come to veganism in different channels different ways and some come come at it from an environmental you know reason or others for animal welfare and then others for health benefits and so that could be um because you see a need maybe that's god nudging you to maybe get something going where, where you're planted you know i think i really believe god has us in these places for a reason and um he wants to equip us and, and grow us where we are planted so maybe take that nudging as as something to kind of look into 
Mm. That's important to, for us to all start right where we're at with our location mm -hmm. and also with a place of worship if we have one. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a comment here that it would be nice if the hospitals had some vegan food. That is a great program that you're describing that will go in and revamp the menu. Can you just say uh, the name of it again for, for those of us so we can... Yeah, it's through our um, Farm Animal Protection Department um, and kind of like our Meatless Monday program. So there's um, there's different things that they're doing, but I can certainly, um, you know, if you guys want to email me after, I can I can link you to that information. So we have okay. a lot of really great resources. Um, so I'm happy to send that. And we okay. also partner with other people like um, Jewish Initiative for Animals and there's Jewish summer camps who are changing their menus. And um, we have, you know, we work with um, the healthy seminarians, healthy churches, and they're working on that. So, so we have some great resources. I'm happy to send you guys. Wonderful. And can you just share um, how people get in contact with you again, just in case they are just tuning in? Yeah, absolutely. So my email is D as in David, C as in Tom, H, O, M as in Mary, S as in Sam, E, N as in Nancy, at humanesociety.org. Um, you can visit us online. It's humanesociety.org. And then if you want to go directly to our faith page, it's backslash faith. And, um, and then also, if you want to visit preventcruelty.ca.com, that is a really exciting new ballot initiative in California, if you're in California. We also have ballot initiatives. Um, if you're in Ohio, we have one to crack down on puppy mills. And if you're in Arizona, we're cracking down on the illegal trafficking of, um, of big cats. So we have some, some exciting ballot initiatives going on right now. Very interesting. And then the, um, the website, you said it was um, forward slash, was it faith outreach? Just faith. Yeah, backslash faith. faith. Got yep. it. Okay, great. So I'm just putting that in here for in the chat box for anyone who wants to great. to reach out. That sounds wonderful. Great. Well, thank you again for all of these resources. I think that's something that is uh, super helpful for us to know about, whether it's whether we want to transition the cafeteria where we work or at the local hospital to uh, a more vegan or vegan friendly um, uh, menu or finding all of these different resources. This is great. Uh, another um, question I wanted to check in with everybody because we're coming towards the end of our program and I know we usually do a, uh, a closing type of prayer and I was wondering if um, we have uh, Deanne was going to share one with us tonight. So if, if you do you have any other things you want to share before we do that, Deanne? I think that's it. Um, yeah, I, I'm grateful that you guys had me on. I hope um, I offered some help, and if um, and you know, we're here to be a resource to you. So um, I'm just really grateful that you guys had us on, and um, please follow up if you have any other questions. Yeah, and I will mention also that uh, Deanne and I are both going to be on a uh, vegan spirituality panel, a discussion panel at the SoCal Veg Fest, which will be happening in the Costa Mesa area, which is in Southern California, um, on October 28th and 29th. So you're welcome to, if you're in the area, it's a huge event, like thousands and thousands of people attend this each year. So it'll be a nice opportunity to have um, a panel. We'll have an interfaith panel of different vegan advocates to talk about their um, specific religions and also to share more about the Interfaith Vegan Coalition. So, so stay tuned for that. And um, other than that, I think we're ready for, for your um, prayer or blessing. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I, um, I tend to do listening prayer. So if we could just have like a moment of just silence, and then I will um, just see, you know, we'll just invite God um, to come in. And if anyone gets like a word or a vision or something great, um, but I'll just do that. And then I'll close this up. I'm just kind of getting this just picture of just a really proud father. And I really think that God is just like so proud, just so proud of all of us and all of your efforts and um, for this calling that's on our lives, um, for, for just following through with that and um, using our lives to serve others and to make the world better for animals. Um, 
So God, I just, um, I thank you for all of these people. I just ask that you bless them, give them your favor. Um, just direct us, let us be your hands and feet on this earth. Um, help us to influence those we need to influence for animals. Um, we ask for big prayers. So I just, I just ask right now that, that factory farms are dismantled, that cages are cracked open, that animals are freed from their enslavement, um, that those, those in positions, um, over animals that they are struck down with compassion, that they change their ways and that they turn and start helping them. And, um, we just ask for victory. We know that, um, your word says that we have overwhelming victory um, through Christ. So we just um, we just proclaim that and declare that right now um, and just comfort all of the animals. And um, we just look forward to a beautiful day when everything is restored. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dan. It's really nice. We've got it was channeled right here in the moment for all of us. <laughs> so we really appreciate um, letting spirit come through you in that lovely way, and also blessing all of our animal advocacy work. And that's for everyone who's joined us um, online or on fa Facebook Live. And knowing that the work that we do in the world is blessed, that we're here for a reason, and that each one of us is really important as part of this. Um, revolution of love that's going yeah. on on the planet right now. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dan, for joining yeah. us and for thank sharing you. these resources. It's been lovely and a special thanks to everyone who's participated in the webinar and to Judy for being our amazing co-host and um, to everyone who's who's tuned in tonight. You're welcome to share this broadcast, share it with other people that you know to, to spread these resources around. And we do these uh, vegan spirituality online gatherings every month. So you can tune in next month. We'll have a, a different guest who will share a new perspective on, on veganism and spirituality. And we also have our um, uh, support group for animal activists that comes up in a couple weeks. And you can find all of these events on our events page, which is idausa.org forward slash events. So thanks to everyone for joining us. And may you have thanks. a lovely thanks, evening. Thank Feel you. Free to unmute yourselves and say hello if you'd like to. <laughs> hello, goodbye. Oh, hello, goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Oh, nice to hear your voices. Bye, everybody. Good night, Thanks everyone. for joining us. <laughs> Thanks so much. Night, all. <laughs>